the podcast. Today we have beautiful Hannah Bossy with us um, and she and I are going to discuss humans and where we actually came from and all the lovely mystical theories surrounding it. Um, Hannah, I will let you introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, hello, my name's Hannah. I um, am an archaeologist. Um, I graduated in... Just so cool. What was that? <laughs> Which is so cool, uh, by the way. I always wanted to... Um, I always loved archaeologists, so I... Um, yeah. I don't know, it doesn't feel real that I'm actually kind of qualified to call myself that I <laughs> yeah do, do, do you think it would feel more real if you were like uh, knee deep in like mud in some digging site somewhere <laughs> yeah I mean I I've only been on one sort of proper uh, archaeological dig and that was pretty fun but um I don't know yeah if I was knees deep in a bog or something looking for treasure then I think <laughs> Yeah, I would have. Uh, I would feel like I've made it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Whereabouts was um, the one dig that is that during your studies or was that post studies? That was the dig that you. Oh uh, yeah, that was during my studies. Um, it wasn't part of my thesis, um, but it sure. was. Uh, it was on Stradbroke Island, and I don't think uh, oh, cool. anything's been published on it yet. So I don't know how much I can. I don't know how much I can say. Yes. Okay. Sure, you have the inside scoop. We will wait for the paper. <laughs> Already very interesting. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, your specialties, or as far as I'm aware, so please correct me. Um, your specialties slash like the study that you did, you uh, studied Australian archaeology. Is that right? Yeah. So, um, I completed my thesis in 2020 and that was on um archaeobotanical remains from uh awesome. a play, another site in Stratty. um and so yeah. i was just analyzing uh, plant material um to determine cool. like subsistence patterns and uh plant use pretty much um at that particular site right yeah. right and what like what time period was oh you're not allowed to say oh, are you allowed I to am say for like, my thesis that was at a a separate site yeah um so this was at oh, gotcha. uh, point lookout which is on the ocean side of Stratty. um and it was yeah it wasn't a super late um wasn't a super kind of early um middle yeah. but it was late holocene so maybe like 500 600 years ago yeah yeah wow yeah. that's so interesting and when you say Midden, is that um, – I'm kind of trying to remember my Indigenous studies. Um, is that the uh, – like the – I don't want to say the wrong thing. Can you yeah. explain what a midden so is? <laughs> a midden essentially is where um, people would throw, like, discard all their stuff. So, yes, okay. yeah, Australia – like, um, archaeologists are pretty much glorified, like, rubbish explorers. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, you learn a lot by trying. Exactly, yeah. it's a great source of uh, knowledge. Uh, so yeah, 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 essentially, I was looking through um, all the discarded bits and pieces, so shells, bones, um, plant material, which yeah. is what I was looking at. But yeah, so that's that's what a midden is. It's um, kind of layers upon layers that's of fascinating. information left behind. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. So I like can imagine, I remember being like a young girl and we, you know, did Indigenous studies as you do typically in Australia, yeah. um, which is great. And I remember going, uh, being led by one of the elders um, through the Burley headland area, oh, yeah. because that's obviously like how, yeah, I went to a school local to there. And um yeah, and he was, like, teaching us about, like, the different plants that the women would use as, like, their quote-unquote shampoo and conditioner yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And it was fascinating. Yeah, so lots of the stuff that I was looking at, um, I mean, obviously people use plants as uh, fuel source and food and stuff like that, but um, 
yeah. you can also do further research um, to do with like residue analysis, which tells you kind of when they would grind up tubers and make flour or, you know, alcohols or a whole array of stuff. Yeah. But um, that was kind of above my pay grade yeah. um, when I was when gotcha. I was there. Gotcha. <laughs> Gotcha. No, that's so fascinating. I think um, I would love to do like a whole podcast just talking about Australian archaeology because I feel like it's a real, like obviously so much of our history is at least popular history is um, Eurocentric, right? Yeah. Um, and, and unless you have access to uh, an Aboriginal community with an elder who has that oral tradition or like the history so much we just don't know so much of it so that we should do that I know yeah absolutely (laughs) there's there's like a wealth of information like it is such an ancient culture and everywhere is sort of different so we're looking into if you have the time yeah 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 no let's do that we shall okay but today um Today, let's talk about where humans came from. So just to kind of like kind of give you the rundown, basically a week ago, I revealed to TikTok that I'm a history nerd, Uh not that I have any qualifications, and TikTok has demanded this podcast of me. And so I instantly was like, (gasps) I need experts. And you were literally the very first person I was like, I want to talk to Hannah oh. but on camera. Um, so anyway, that video was on 536 AD and like the volcanic eruptions that took place and then in turn the Justinian plague. So I've done two episodes on that thus far. So this will be the third official and the first interview of the podcast. Oh, um, and no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Um, and so everyone listening or watching, I uh, just asked Hannah, like, what do you love talking? Like what, what at a party will someone be like, can you please shush? Like, (laughs) what is that topic? And Hannah told me a couple of things. And one of them was, yeah, human, human origins. So there's a a broad audience. So I'm just going to honestly, like ask you a couple of questions, you speak, and then I might just uh, simplify some terms because I'm sure that you have an understanding here and I'm going to like lay personalize it. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So the first question I have is, can you give us just like a crash course on where we came from, like the development of how we became homo sapiens? Um, Got to give the people what they want. Hey. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I didn't really know where you wanted me to start with the uh, whole crash course of human evolution. So I thought maybe yeah. let's just go right from the very beginning. Yeah. Sure. All right. So uh, I don't know, about six million years ago, that's when um, yeah. kind of uh, chimps and humans diverged from each other. Um yeah, so that's okay. where we have our last common uh, grandmother, like with yeah. the, with chimps, which is not always, you know, something that people love to think about. Um, sure. Being kind of connected in that way to primates, but about six million years yeah. ago, that's where kind of our different lines separated. Um, yeah. yeah. Then let's kind of fast forward to um, maybe when humans sort of started to evolve in Africa. Um, so that sort of, yeah. um, that sort of happened in two, like 2.5 million years ago. Um, wow. Okay. So that's, like a, so that's like a fast forward of like 4 million years. Yeah. That is a substantial of amount like, of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. between that, there's like, um, there's steps between kind of where we diverge from chimps to a, a human. Um, but I'm sort of yes. glazing over that because as an archaeologist, uh, that sort of uh, when humans began to evolve in Africa, that's when my little ears prick up and go, oh, this is my yeah, thing. Got you. Because is there, 
is the um is the pre like I'm not sure on the terms, but is it the like pre humanoid stages? Is that that's a different science, right? Yeah. Is so, that true? Well, because because they are technically in our human line, um, yeah. it's sort of like an ambiguous kind of area. I mean, uh, gotcha. it does it can still fall within the realm of archaeology. Um, I haven't personally done that gotcha. much in it though, because. I don't know, I didn't have the right sort of professionals at uni taking, like, holding my yeah. hand through it all. Um, well, yeah. But, yeah, technically technically it does fall under the scope of archaeology. Um, gotcha. But it's sort yeah. of errs between archaeology and sort of uh, maybe paleontology? I, I don't know. But uh, Yeah, okay. Kind but, of beyond my... So, yeah. Sure. <laughs> so just let's fast forward the four million years and <laughs> we arrive. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no, you're fine. You interrupt me whenever whenever you need. I, I'm i honestly um, a little nervous and I'm just going to kind of blabber. Uh, oh, yeah. Blabber. No. I'm um, sorry. Uh, this, is, this is around the time where um, they start using kind of stone tools. Um, and the beginning of uh, the Stone Age, so the uh, Paleolithic uh, or Old Stone Age. And uh, this is yeah. like when they're using, um, it's called the Older One tools. So yeah. they're like extremely old kind of um, like made from pebbles and kind of, um, yeah. oh, the words are escaping me, but um, that's yeah. the beginning of... Um, using stones as tools. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So. And how do, we know, how do we know the difference between, like, just a rock versus a rock that was used for a tool? Do you, do you yeah, know? Yeah, the difference like, between a stone and a stone tool. Yeah, <laughs> like. Like. Um, exactly. Yeah. So there are. How do we identify? There that? are telltale signs on uh, artifacts. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously you can't definitively tell if a rock is an ancient tool um, or just yeah. like um, fallen in the right way and cracked to look like a tool. Yeah. Um, there are, there are like telltale signs. Um, it's a speciality within archaeology um, to focus on lithics. So, um, gotcha. you know, they'll have like a bulb of, bulb of percussion where like it got, it got struck and wow. um, just yeah. Different uh, anatomical features that kind of clue you into whether that was a naturally occurring thing or not. But, um, gotcha. Yeah, sometimes there'll be, like, residue left on the surface of the tool and that kind of definitively will tell you that maybe it was used as a as a tool. But Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I hope oh, that cool. Works. That's <laughs> Yeah, it does. No, that's it. Please continue. <laughs> um, so uh, about... Two million years ago, uh, like hominids would uh, left Africa, um, spread yeah. through Eurasia. So gotcha. um, that's sort of when the evolution of different, um, like human species, kind of yeah. emerged. Um, so we have yeah. Homo ergaster, Homo erectus. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so they sort of like start to diffuse out in out of Africa into Eurasia, um, the Middle East, yeah. and that sort gotcha. of thing. Um, I have some papers because yeah, I absolutely, edit it's a lot. What I uh, included in this time. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for doing that. Is, that's so great. No, no, that's <laughs> okay. Otherwise, you know, that's millions of years of content to share in four well, minutes. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> exactly. That's like you mentioned like four species and I like have 75 questions about all four, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah. So I'll let you keep going though. Okay. Along the timeline. Um, and then probably the most common ancestor that we know is the Neanderthals. They sort of appear yeah. across Europe um, maybe 230,000 years ago. Um, okay. 
So quite advanced then from 2 million through to 200 odd thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of time. That is a lot of time, yeah. right? You know, what's interesting is that species like Homo erectus were around for hundreds of thousands of years. And when you yeah, think of wow. Homo sapiens, it's just a blip right at the end of. Isn't that insane? Yeah, like, it's crazy. And, and obviously, like, we do we know, like, we know Homo sapiens, we've obviously got, like, a bigger brain and that sort of thing. Yeah. So do we know when, like, uh, humans, I suppose, I'll just call them humans, yeah. like, Homo erectus, whatnot, do we know when we became, like, conscious of ourselves? Hmm, I don't know about... Uh, conscious of ourselves, but um, Homo. Well, like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh no, that's okay. So, um, Homo sapiens uh, developed in Africa, and there's a few theories yeah. debating whether that you know it they evolved in one location compared to several different locations. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But as a separate species, we came. Uh, let me see if I can find. Oh, yeah, we came into the picture at about um, just shy of 200,000 years ago. So both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, or however you say it, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. they're pretty late in the um, evolution of humans. Yeah. So. Gotcha. So we share then, well, I guess depending on your theories, we share – all that ancestry up to a point where we split or we, or did the Neanderthals and the Homo sapiens completely develop differently? Or is that a can of worms? It is, <laughs> it is sort of a can of worms. Um, yeah. It's, it's super complex. Um, yeah. Neanderthals are supposed to have um, evolved in sort of up out of Africa, like adapted up out of Africa for sort of cold, sure. cooler weather. Um, and oh, I don't cool. actually know at what point they sort of diverged, but um, they are sort of def different species and were able to sort yeah. of interbreed with each other um, along yeah. with other, um, other species to kind of broaden the gene pool, I suppose. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Because yeah. I'm kind of thinking, like, this is definitely oversimplifying it, but I'm kind of thinking, like, breeds of dogs. <laughs> like, like, I don't know, Great Dane maybe being the Neanderthals and then just, like, a, I don't know, Kelpie being a huge... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking as you're saying this. Well, it, that, that's a good way of thinking of it. Obviously, yeah, it is... A very simplified version of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh, interestingly enough, actually, um, is that every every sort of um, every sort of race that is or person that's out of Africa has uh, traces of something else in them. Yeah. So interesting. Um, whether that be uh, Neanderthal or um, yeah, uh, Denisovan or kind of yeah. other yeah other breeds of humans. Of, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. No, I literally did not know this till recently. Yeah. I, I I remember doing like anthropology one hundred and one. You know, that's yeah. probably as far as my anthropological studies have gone. And um, yeah, I just always thought they were completely separate and that they couldn't interbreed. It was is that what the science is that did I listen in class like was that what we thought yeah well this is sort of a, a common theme through history I'm sure that you've come across is that um yeah. uh, the narrative that we were sort of often taught or brought up with is very um whitewashed and very yes. um kind of uh, Western people being kind of apart yeah. from everybody else. Yeah. Um, and so as the writers of history, we put ourselves in like a favourable um, kind of, what's the word? Um, like as the main characters. 
Yeah. 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 Um, gotcha. So I think for the idea of humans interbreeding with um, Neanderthals and other types of uh, humanoid creatures was kind yeah. of a bit like for um, yeah kind of earlier sensibilities in uh, gotcha kind of Western society at least. And I was just thinking, it, like, because you said at the start, um, it, like this topic. I remember being young and, like, uh, for people that are listening, uh, I grew up very conservative in a Christian home, and Hannah did too, and um, this basic science was somewhat of a taboo. So I can imagine that, like, did religion suppress this science for some amount of time or, like, what was the go there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. So Charles Darwin championed the kind of evolutionary um, theory, which um, for lots of people flies in the face of the creation. um, Yes, like the Adam and Eve. Exactly. Um, And so I think people coming to terms with um, what is kind of basic science um, is difficult for them to well, difficult to get your head around. Um, yes. But I don't necessarily think that um, it's worth kind of not looking into, uh, yeah, you know, furthering your knowledge about scientific things if, oh, if you do come 100%. from that yeah. um, sort of background like you and I. Yeah. But um, there's just so much that we don't actually know. And no. Uh, yeah, that's just blowing my mind that these human species or hum- human-like species were around for millions of years and then we're just this little bitty blip on the end. Like, yeah. that is just w- wild. Like, imagine, like, they would have ha- – yeah, I'm just crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, nuts. Yeah. Um. So uh, – um, what was I going to ask? I was going to say, so obviously the Homo sapien made it, mm-hmm. um, but, like, what happened there? Like, we've obviously got DNA indicators that show that there's some Neanderthal in us. Like, how did we kind of all come together and just, like, make a super species and we're it? Or not really? <laughs> uh, uh. I don't know. It, it's it's sort of a big mess in the way I understand it. It's mm-hmm. kind of like there's bits of information here and bits of information here, and the best I can do is kind of like, well, this happened around this time and this happened. Yeah. This time. Okay. Um, gotcha. But for anyone who's interested, it's just a matter of kind of reading broadly and doing a little bit of, um, I don't know, research or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I did just see on my notes here that um, at one se- hundred and seventy thousand years ago is yeah. um, where there's a mitochondrial Eve, so the direct ancestor to all living people today. This person was living in Africa around that time, so still Gosh. ages ago. But again, yeah, a tiny blip on you know the existence of matter. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> So interesting. So there's like we can literally go back through like because everyone remember the mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell, <laughs> and so we can go back through that and find her, like yeah. the mother. If you would. That's so interesting. Yeah, it is really interesting. Um, uh, I guess to keep going on the timeline, yeah. um. About 70,000 years ago, that's the cognitive, that kind of marks the cognitive revolution, which is, you know, where we develop language and uh, kind of considered the beginning of history, I guess, um, with the, um, with language and uh, like being capable of complex thought. Sure. Yeah. Is that because our like, cerebral cortexes got bigger like is that yeah there like there are a few sort of like theories about 
what sparked the cognitive um, yeah. revolution. Some people believe that it's something to do with um, digesting the enzymes of cooked food, um, that it uh-huh. sort of like blew our minds and yeah. all of a sudden our eyes became opened to complex theories Thought. and stuff like that. Right. Um, but uh, it could just be a point where um, archaeologists just start to see stuff in the archaeological record. Um, sure. Because anything that we piece together is literally garbage that we dig up essentially yeah. and then have to yeah. put together like a puzzle. Yeah. Um, and I can imagine like after like 100,000 years in the ground, like yeah. what is there really left to like – you know. Exactly, exactly. There, yeah. it, you don't get a perfect picture of um, no. anything, like, really. Um, but, which is, like, incredibly frustrating. I just really want to know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you can piece together theories, but um, in the end you kind of you have to sort of make your best judgment with yeah. what you have. Um, but totally. this is sort of the, this is the period where they start finding, um, like them making clothes from animal hides and using bone to like yeah, sew right. things and, um, they begin burying their dead. So rather than just finding a skeleton abandoned, um, they're like, oh. yeah. Right. And, um, yeah, it's just. You begin to see that they were they were traveling yeah. in family groups and the late, um, so, extending yeah. the life, like looking after their elderly and their sick. Yeah, and like someone people with broken bones that I, healed and stuff like, like probably that. was capable of loving yeah. that person to bury them. And yeah, that's in yeah. Yeah. yeah, seventy thousand years ago. Um, yeah, then maybe. So as, as sort of like uh, yeah. anatomically modern humans went out of, course, of yeah. Africa into uh, the rest of the world, that's where you begin so, to see so um, where, other where are we? We're at 78,000? Um, so you begin to see yeah. the extinction of like the Neanderthals, um, Homo erectus, and all the other um, people around about the place. So, yeah, there's, there's sure. debate whether they – just became, you know, kind of bred out um, uh, or uh, okay. whether the competition for food, um, like yeah. they just got outsmarted by the Homo sapiens mm-hmm. um, when competing for food and um, subsistence resources. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah right yeah interesting um i always joke about how like for myself I, yeah uh, I mean, could being really pregnant and having kids one of the that is the most unnatural thing ever and that i can't fathom the fact that really we're know. like the uh, human something interesting exists. because like really it's so difficult to um, reproduce i wonder if it Some of them literally just died out one to, human because female of lack to make of like a baby. fertility or um, whatever. That sort of came with the development of bipedalism. So from yeah. being able yeah. to, uh, from like being four-legged creatures yeah. going up to two so that you can um, still move around and have your child, which essentially is premature. If you think of any other animal, mm-hmm. um, when they're born, they are able to walk and take care of themselves after a couple of days or hours. Um, but with human force, they're yeah. essentially useless for um, years. Um, so out of necessity, um, mothers need to be able yeah. to have two arms free to look after their baby and still get things yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But- <laughs> Useless, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, they depend on so long. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's so true. I like never really thought about that before. Um, I wonder as well, like in earlier, yeah, what earlier versions of the Homo sapiens, if there was like it, major read, differences um, in, in reproduction. You, you know, like by, have we always had nine months of pregnancy? Or yeah, that's like, a good. It's a good book. You know, when newborns um, always at, like were it explains uh, things in sort of layman's terms. terms which always was it always still risky? good me because I, I actually it's just something I'm interested in, not necessarily an expert in. Yeah. Um, but he talks about how, um, uh, no, it's not my two red, so. but I haven't. Uh, um, gotcha. Yeah. We're talking about babies. And yeah. mothers. Uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I always do this. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm on a roll. Sapiens. Oh, sorry. What were we talking about? I didn't forget. Yeah. We were talking about babies. If you think about it, we can come back to it. <laughs> oh, this is like this is like talking with myself right now. So I'm like, oh, I forgot my point. Moving on. <laughs> it's like gone. <laughs> Um, what was I, I was just going to ask quickly. Um, Mm -hmm. so I heard (laughs) that we recently Uh, have discovered, I don't know if it's like recently discovered or like people have just read about it. And so it's like popularized, but we know obviously that like the, and as far as I I can see, and um, I heard that we've just like recently kind of, found a, um, a giant emergence of a giant species. race has is that it sort of popped up every that, couple of years. Is that just? Um, I think to, it might be a hoax, but don't quote me on that. Um, there definitely is a race of sort of um, they call them hobbits. Okay. Um, so those are yeah people that um, are about one meter in height. Um, they're from. Uh, the Isle of Flores yeah. or something, just off the coast of Indonesia. Homo sure. Floriensis, I think. Um, but yeah, those 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 two okay. exist. Yeah. There is evidence of yeah, those, okay. um, for sure. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just like yeah. a human, except condensed yeah so those yeah wow i um i went i think they actually as um, you were saying that i traveled to bulgaria in one one building there was a small skeleton skeleton and like a giant human her proportions um, were like just like you would assume (laughs) but yeah (laughs) she was talking about this um but apparently it was like an elephant skeleton yeah constructed to look like a giant which was very disappointing but that yeah as far as a giant race. I couldn't find anything about that. Oh, but <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. Dang. <laughs> um, but in that I suppose yeah, like a Neanderthal like, and if you're listening and you've never seen an like, image of an, um, a, a Neanderthal or at least is quite, what we can reconstruct um, they are bigger like in like their heads are different, different and um, and but I forget all the other proportions but maybe you <laughs> thought to be the commentary to the cooler <laughs> um if you're kind of broader and stockier sure. then you're able to concentrate heat within your body yeah um, more effectively um announced yeah uh, yeah so yeah um yeah you, uh, just like kind of darwin's experiments with the finches um, yeah interesting developing different physical traits to suit different climates humans did the same sort interesting. of thing but over a long, long sure of time. yeah yeah interesting Yeah. 
Iya. Yeah, that's so fascinating. Yeah, well, that's what I was just thinking. It's kind of like, you know, you put two human beings next to each other today and, like, really, like, there's no difference yeah. that, like, some might be slightly um, shorter yeah, or if, whatever, but, if, like, um, we're all you pretty a much. Search of, I, I, I'm sure if you looked at all of our skeletons, skulls, they basically look then like Then it'll this. show you like, so a to be able to notice different skulls. And a difference like, in the, the skeletons show, must show, like, becomes thousands bigger. and thousands and thousands um, of years of adaption. By the time that we get to Homo sapiens. Yeah. And, um, and the brow line, like, we just become finer featured. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. This caveman I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I guess more like what we look like today then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, um, okay, so that's, so when do the, ne- is, the, sorry. <laughs> um, do yeah, so know <laughs> which homo um, um, species uh, probably. Was- the last I think it's Homo Floriensis, which is the small um was like um, we're like the Neanderthals the like with us until they kind of hominid like, that isn't a Homo sapiens <laughs> who, who um <laughs> that was found. And that's that's probably just because they had little to no contact with Homo sapiens. Um uh, but I, I think oh, the yes, Neander- okay. Homo yeah. Neanderthalensis and um Homo uh, yeah, I want to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not a gaster. It, it there's sure. another one. Yeah, sort of the Asian, uh, Eurasian sort of area. But those, um, yeah, those kind of became extinct extinct later on in the game. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fascinating as well that we were um, able to cross. A horse and a donkey can make a mule, but two mules. I just Aren't, didn't um, realize that i always thought it was kind of like a donkey meals. situation yeah. where they they're like i don't know the proper terminology but like i know that a donkey can't make another donkey isn't it like a, yeah oh anyway i that's what yeah <laughs> yes can't yeah, yeah i yeah. um I wrote it down suddenly yeah, on my just like papers, if we were to mate with so a many total different species, a but, pregnancy uh, would not be viable. So, so it's super interesting so, that we were um, able to mate with. Yeah, so. Yeah, like the, the there, there, there is was kind of a debate well. whether um, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis um, should be classed <laughs> as like a subspecies no, of the okay. other. Um, just for that very uh, reason, but it's fine. sort of sort of widely accepted that it's kind of a bit too complicated to kind of fit it into a box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, us as uh, Homo uh, sapiens, we're actually uh, Homo sapiens sapiens, which is a subspecies within Homo sapiens. What a, um, gotcha. And oh, that's so interesting. So they, there are some, some people, people who do argue that no, they are the same. The, the, well, hypothesizing that kind of um, subspecies ne- Neanderthalensis oh, wow. should be um, within that same kind of subspecies. Okay. Arrangement. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. 
Gotcha. Like the same umbrella. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. Ah, oh, that is very fascinating. Um, I mean, how do we? Oh, oh, sorry. Let me stick to my questions uh, because cultural Otherwise, I'll go off on a tangent. Mm, scientific industry. It'll be the weirdest question. Um, yes. Yeah. That's when we started farming. So that's where we became Africa. Sort of Wait. Sedentary. Have we completed the most? Are we? We're um, sort of there began, in the time. Began right? producing food. Okay. Yeah. Um, and domesticating animals instead of hunting and gathering. Sure. Is that when we started farming? Yeah. Uh, Sure. It's thought to be around 12,000 years ago. Um, So kind of late in the game if you think about it. But um, Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah, feeding ourselves on purpose versus just, like, chasing a block of land and making Um, that profitable to you rather than, like, how many taking over a whole landscape and expending energy where it's, you know, you don't really need to. Okay, wow. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously having to be nomadic and yeah. like kind of move with the and seasons. Like with and yeah, in agriculture. That is so fascinating um, that with the agricultural that only happened like twelve people were able to sort of sit still when for the think first about, time in like this began kind of human millions history of years ago and only twelve thousand years ago is it kind of even relevant writing. to some it's just kind of modern become enemy. a community. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, rather than every day fighting for your life sort of thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 I can imagine, like, there were a lot of, like, um, physical... Pro, like adaptions that happened then because if we were always yeah, so, yeah, running and hunting and gathering and more adapted to probably that scared for our lives environment rather and then than we all of a sudden with become the seasons like and, not um, sedentary because it, you know you know working a farm is not easy group, but more uh, sedentary kind of make i can imagine where you are good to feed we would have adapted a lot yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. black I mean, not to say, obviously, that's yeah. a generalisation, right? In Turkey? Because some cultures continued that practice very significantly. Well, yeah. this is how I, um, I think it said. Do it's... we know? <laughs> so, tepe. forgive me if I pronounce well, it wrong. I hope, you know what I mean. I'm sure you will. Um, is it Golepi? Um yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can, you say that? Can you say that once more? Uh, as what yeah, I can remember, don't know how to say. Um, <laughs> the oldest. Yeah, that sounds of so sort of. So is am I, I correct in thinking that's what we think is the oldest, like um, quote unquote, civilization that we have record um, of? So before, uh, before that, you kind of build structures for a purpose, like to um, for, to be a house or to a storage area. Um, but Gobleki Tepe was uh, um, okay. the first sort of monolithic okay. structure oh, dedicated solely for the purpose of um, ritual or um, worship or, or something. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Worship. Yeah, wow. Communities are got to. Okay. So yeah. when do you know when um when did we think start about seeing evidence maybe of four thousand years ago the Sumerians like what am I um, trying to say? Develop when did we start doing the city first? Thing? Like when did we start building the see. communities, yeah. you know? Um you know, that's maybe the, the let's see. 
The first empire was the Akkadian Empire or Sargon, which I don't actually yeah. know anything about. Um, but okay. Yeah, about 4,000 yeah, okay. years ago, which again is very recent. Yeah. But, wow. I mean, after the advent of yeah, okay. uh, agriculturalism, it would have taken a while to kind of develop uh, wow, communities and um, social structures and... Wow, um, yeah. That is you know, so uh, how to run things. Like, do, you, do we have a le one leader or are we um, like a military, militia sort of led civilization group? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, yeah. this is sort of where it kicks off and becomes like human history Absolutely. kind of kicks off and becomes And then like complex enter obviously the normal things own, in life like uh, disease and cultural structures and, and belief and systems and conflict and, social, and um, scarcity of food if the weather's yeah. wrong or, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Me yeah, absolutely. too. Yeah, that's so interesting. Just like um, being in the backyard. And okay, trying. cool. So oh, that ooh, kind of brings us to like, I guess what we know <laughs> about human history. I'm always like really hoping that there'll be some like insane new civilization <laughs> discovered, you know, like. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. yeah could you imagine that like just that would be insane um like I think about in places like um like really dense areas where like a lot of history has taken place like uh I don't know like in the Middle East and stuff like that um I yeah, forget what I was watching so I feel like amazing. it was Jerusalem I um, feel like they were building a, a sucker for like very uh, treasure like a mystery six story building I think that's in Jerusalem and they're just digging the foundation to be an archaeologist and the reality is two thousand year old being an archaeologist stuff is, that we never knew existed like is less glamorous. How cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um yeah. yeah. But yeah, there are still so many things, uh so many mysteries, I guess, that are you know yes. just waiting to be uncovered. Yeah. Of course, of course, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, and like you said, I, I mean, yeah. we, you know, might see a tabloid and it's like, we found some such and such as sarcophagus, but like, we weren't there for this 11 years of digging, yeah, so, you know, uh, that might have taken place. I, I love And, like, I've watched my fair share of like, archaeology documentaries to know that that is not glamorous at all. Put together and that's a like digging, excavation right? in the like, back of the oval or whatever. Most of um, the work but is, I, I guess, in, Most like, of the work with archaeology is done and, in the lab. You know, it's, like, sorting uh, bags and bags of material um, especially in like your body, which is what I did. It's just sorting bags and bags of material yeah, and gotcha. under a microscope and trying to put together what you think it all means, um, which I, I like also. Yeah. But it's not for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, you sort of have to do your yes. best. Um, yeah. 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 Well, it's like a puzzle, but without the end picture, right? Yeah. I think my yeah, particular to come up with sort what of, on earth is going on um, here. Yeah. I don't know. OCD sort of like, traits. You're right. It's like fit very well. It would not be for everyone. Like in if a, I, I'm in a lab an impatient and staring down person, a microscope, for I feel like love it. that would drive me insane. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. Um, which is actually perfect because I have had a lot of people reach out. Um, I make it pretty clear on like my <laughs> pages that like, I'm not, I'm not qualified in any historical field, but I just enjoy it. Um, and so I've received a bunch of messages of people saying, I really want to study mm -hmm. anthropology, archaeology, whatnot. How do I go about it? And I've just responded, I will be interviewing okay. um, the well, archaeologist shortly uh, to, to and me, I will ask her I, that um, question. So for people that are interested, in like, Australia, I don't know give us a sense. Uh, you already saw where Pat, Give us a sense of, yeah, what is, is it actually like? But um, in and Australia, for me, it was just a matter of study um, like and where you study to that and all of that. Um, who had an archaeological program. Yeah. So for me, that was the University of Queensland. In Australia, there are yeah. a few, um, like, really good all places place. to study yeah. um, archaeology. Um, but for those who, like, aren't, you know, ready to commit to archaeology as um, a discipline, yeah, okay. uh, just start with, like, reading and um, yeah. learning how to research, um, getting those sort of fundamental things. <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's such okay. a fun, like a foundational and skill. And I feel like, like that's a big thing, no matter what you're studying, to right, find is learning how to actually effectively stuff. research stuff. Um, like, I mean, but my yeah, master's is in so, business, uh, and I learned that reality, first, you know. So is, I guess it's um, the same everywhere. A but lot because of lab work. A lot of uh, behind-the-scenes sort of counting Absolutely. and um, recording and uh, yeah. writing yeah. articles and papers, um, publishing your work. Um, I think if you're in Australia, a good way to actually um, get into it is yes. to volunteer or go onto social media, um, find your local, yeah. like, Aboriginal groups, and they can kind of teach you... Um, Sure. Kind of teach you about the area that you live in, like you with your um, school. Yeah, I like. I, I'm sure they would be happy to happy to t chat with you about you know that particular place. Um, right. it's, it's really interesting to figure out you know what is going on in the place where you live. People have been around for so long. Yeah, um, like school groups and things. Yeah, it's yeah. just very. It's, it's cool. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's actually a really good point is like volunteering and trying it. Yeah. Um, that's cool. So what, um, like, what do you, like, obviously, me, like, for I those listening, Hannah is um, a young mum to two. So, obviously, you're in the trenches of parenting kind of right now. But what, what do you, like, what's your, what are your I, um, interests picking? Really like, what do you think that you're working with uh, do next? the Kwandamuka people on Strati? Um, it was just really interesting. Um, got to know some of the local people and um, kind of like, yeah. I don't know, feeling their sort of connection to their ancestors Amazing. and heritage in that one particular cool. area. I just felt really cool and special to me. Um, yeah. But so for me, I, it would be either doing work with Aboriginal groups yeah. um, or cultural heritage management sort of positions. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. 
That's and that's just so like obviously you know I'm part Indigenous, not to Australia, to New Zealand, yeah. and part Maori, and so I completely understand what you mean. Just from the little, I know from my culture that that connection to the their surroundings and the earth is just it's so different from westernized culture i guess um and it's a really um yeah it's i think it's an under it's a misunderstood or or not understood my education in that area which i think we're lacking can all learn um, like what so many Um, thousands of years i I think of their history could we learn about an interest in your own if we just asked right or looked in the ground (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I will 1,000% be Mm -hmm. trying to steal more of your time to talk about Australian history. (laughs) Like, it's going to happen. Um, Because... Yeah, I think it's a really important. I think, like as well, like it's obviously. Oh, I agree with um, you. I mean, if you wanted to thing, really get into being a, a modern day um, Australian, you could go and um, ask what. what and I believe that's kind of like the of best thing. way but, um, that we can honor yeah, the indigenous societies is like learning, and right? being really interested. Is, I don't know. That's my not personal point. Showing of view. I'm not sure if being that's... interested. Um, I can do so much good for the whole community. I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And who knows what we'll dig up next. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) Yes. I do too. Um, Thank you so, 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 so much for coming on. That was fascinating. Um, and I'm sure everyone will have a bunch of questions and all of that. But I'm going to press unrecord now. So thank you so much. <laughs> it was great. Awesome.